Similar to the TGV of France, the Intercity Express, or ice trains of Germany, have formed a fundamental part of the high-speed railway network of continental Europe, reducing journey times between major centres both within its home nation and surrounding countries. Compared to the TGV though, progress for the ice train, despite originating at around the same time, has been somewhat slower, but now that more dedicated high-speed routes have come online, the system has truly been able to expand into a suitable competitor to the domestic airliner. The first considerations for improving the speed of trains in Germany began in around 1968, four years after the Japanese Shinkansen demonstrated that the use of dedicated high-speed railways that ironed out curves and removed obstructive slower trains could reduce journey time significantly. In that year, the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research undertook a study into the technical and economic feasibility of high-speed rail transport in Germany, resulting in a 1971 paper that showed it was necessary for train travel speeds on the German railways to be increased, leading to the start of developments in 1972 for new railway technologies. Meanwhile, in 1969, the first tests of the Transrapid Maglev system were undertaken as an alternative to speeding up conventional rail systems, with the first model, a tabletop miniature dubbed Transrapid 1, being tested in Munich during 1970, before full-scale concepts were developed throughout the 1970s. However, the National Railway Operator of West Germany, Deutsche Bundesbahn, were not convinced as to the potential success of maglev technology, and instead focused their efforts into developing high-speed trains based on conventional wheeled rail systems, their first move being to take 17 miles of the Ham-Minden Railway and use it to test a specially modified Class 103 locomotive that could reach 160 miles an hour. This isn't to say that German railways weren't fast to begin with, the DB Class 103 being capable of 125 miles an hour, but was constrained largely by the geography of certain routes that were forced into winding valley floors. With the results of these tests illustrating the effects of high-speed rail on both trains and infrastructure, the National Transport Plan, or Bundeswerkerswege Plan, outlined a comprehensive scheme to upgrade approximately 1,200 miles of mainline railways to speeds capable of 190 miles an hour, followed in 1974 by the formation of the Community Office, or Gemeinschaftbüro, by Deutsche Bundesbahn, in order to develop a 190 mile an hour capable high-speed train. From this, 30 different concepts arose, ranging from electric and diesel multiple units to locomotives and coaching stock, these proposals gradually being reduced to a short list of 10 designs based on their cost per person per kilometre ratios, but by 1979 all of the schemes, including a 16,000 horsepower locomotive capable of 250 miles an hour and a 190 mile an hour train able to carry between 200 and 600 passengers, had been dropped on cost grounds. Shortly afterwards, the newly founded Forschungsgemeinschaft Rad China, or Rail Wheel Research Community, a combined effort created through specialists from industry, universities and the railways, built a prototype test car called Versuchsfahrzeug 1, or Test Train 1, followed by Test Train 2 in 1980, which was capable of reaching 220 miles an hour, and therefore provided the incentive for DB to invest 12 million Deutschmarks into a dedicated prototype called the Radschiene Versuchs und Demonstration Fahrzeug, or Rail Wheel Test and Demonstration Powertrain, later to be known as the IC Experimental, or Intercity Experimental. The end result was a fixed-rate train set consisting of two power cars and however many carriages were needed for either testing or commercial use. This set, unlike the French TGV, being non-articulated, and therefore flexible to either add or remove carriages if required. With support now provided by the Ministry, through a publication on the Bundesanzeiger, or Federal Register, dated February 10, 1981, development of the train set commenced following the securing of funds on September 6 of the same year, and the IC experimental train set was expected to be delivered for use by 1985, to coincide with the 150th anniversary of the Bundesbahn, the first concept was a set comprising of two power cars and six coaches, but this was reduced to two coaches on cost grounds, before finally being extended to three in 1983, so as to offer more seating variations, particularly in second class, while DB worked together with the industry, supported by the Ministry, who at the same time continued to fund developments into the Transrapid Maglev technology. As the train set was being created, planning and construction of the first German dedicated high-speed railway was undertaken, with the initial route, the hanover Würzburg High-Speed Railway, stretching 203 miles with a top speed of 170 miles an hour, while also being designed to accommodate both high-speed trains, as well as faster regional trains and freight trains. Construction of the IC Experimental train set began in late 1983, with the power cars being constructed by Krupp, Henschel and Krauss Maffei, the electrical components by Siemens, AEG, Brown, Bavarian Company, and the coaches by Messerschmitt, Bolklo, Blohm, 
with the cost of construction being split between the Federal Ministry for Research, Deutsche Bundesbahn, and other partners at a 61-17-22% share, respectively. The resultant train set was delivered in 1985, and began testing for the proposed fleet of intercity express trains, attaining a new land speed record for railed vehicles on May 1, 1988, at 252.8 miles per hour, while travelling on the dedicated hanover wurzburg high-speed railway between Fulda and Wurzburg, which remained unsurpassed until 1990 when it was beaten by the TGV Atlantique. The IC Experimental, later known as the ICE-V or Versuchsfahrzeug, was a direct predecessor to the first generation of production ICE trains, the ICE-1, with development of the original fleet starting after Deutsche Bundesbahn published tender documents on January 2, 1986, for 41 train sets consisting of two power cars and 12 trailers, but this was later increased to 59 sets. ICE-1 construction began in September 1987, and the first sets began trials in autumn of 1990, with these trains being officially presented on February 28, 1991, at a ceremony in Fulda, before a press run was undertaken on March 8 between Hamburg and Ulm. Regularly scheduled ICE train operations began on June 2, 1991, when the 0553 service departed from hamburg Altona, with ICE-1 train sets operating on the initial ICE line from Hamburg to Munich, via Hanover, Fulda, Frankfurt, Stuttgart and Augsburg, at hourly intervals. The introduction of high-speed operations coinciding with the inauguration of the second high-speed line between Mannheim and Stuttgart, a distance of 62 miles. Since the start of ICE services in 1991, the dedicated high-speed rail lines have been expanded to include several routes, these ranging from three 175 mile an hour high-speed lines between Hanover and Wurzburg, Stuttgart and Mannheim, and Wolfsburg and Berlin, and later high-speed routes capable of 200 miles an hour between Cologne and Frankfurt, Nuremberg and Munich, and Nuremberg and Leipzig. The ICE-1 revolutionized travel on German railways, with high-quality modular interiors that provided all the latest features for an express train, while the internal design of the carriages allowed for increased seat width and improved pitch for better legroom. Such was the success of the ICE-1 that in 1992, the National Passenger Rail Operator of America, Amtrak, hired a set, together with the Swedish X-2000 tilting train, as part of their proposals to speed up services on the Northeast Corridor between Washington DC, Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York and Boston, with one 8-car set, modified extensively for American use, including conversion to 11 kV 25 Hz electrical systems, leaving Bremerhaven in May 1993, and arriving in New York a month later. Both train sets proceeded to undertake a tour of the USA during the summer of 1993, with the imported trains dragged to non-electrified areas by a pair of experimental F-69 PHAC diesel locomotives, this tour including visits to 25 cities across the USA and Canada, before seeing a brief introduction into service on Metroliner diagrams between New York and Washington, with Siemens particularly enthusiastic about the scheme, proposing a partnership with AEG Westinghouse in order to develop 26 train sets for Amtrak on the Boston-New York-Washington service. Had they been successful, American versions of the ICE-1 would have been built at five plants of the General Motors Electromotive Division, or EMD, in the United States. But sadly, the ICE-1 failed to meet the mark due to stringent requirements for crash safety outlined by the Federal Railroad Administration, or FRA, with the proposed new design for the Amtrak High Speed Express instead leading to the Acela sets, these being derived from the French-built TGV Rezo trains. Much of what killed any potential export enthusiasm for the ICE-1 came following the devastating Eschler derailment of June 3, 1998 when ICE train number 51, travelling between Munich and Hamburg, crashed at Eschde near Celle, Lower Saxony, due to a flaw in the design of the ice one's wheel that caused a fatigue crack that peeled the tyre away from the wheel itself, puncturing the carriage floor. In part due to the hesitation of the train's conductor in pulling the emergency brake, the train was still travelling at around 125 miles an hour when the protruding tyre struck a set of points as it passed Eschde, derailing the train and sending carriages hurtling into the piers of a concrete overbridge which collapsed down onto the train set as it piled up against the remains of the structure, killing 101 people, including two DB maintenance workers who were carrying out their duties under the bridge when the train crashed. The reason for the accident came down to the single-cast wheel sets of the ICE-1, a lightweight design based on tramcar wheel sets, which, while cheaper to implement, had never been properly tested at high speed, and thus engineers were unaware that due to metal fatigue, this set up a resonance that caused the carriages to vibrate the solution being to implement rubber dampers on the suspension in order to stop the vibrations reaching the passenger cabin, but failing to solve the overall problem. In the wake of the disaster, new wheel designs were introduced, 
but at the time of the crash, Siemens, in collaboration with Alstom, were attempting to market European-based high-speed trains to Asian railways, specifically Taiwan, with a demonstration set comprising Ice One power cars and TGV duplex double-deck coaching stock. But due to the accident, as well as various financial and legal complications, Taiwan opted instead for the THSR 700T, which was based on the 700 series Shinkansen of Japan. Since the original Ice One, the design has been modified significantly to form successive generations of Ice Train, followed initially by the Ice Two of 1997, which replaced one of the power cars with a cab control car, but later the Ice Three of 1999, also known as the Siemens Valaro, a train that comprehensively modified the design into an electric multiple unit that could be used on international services across Europe, and was also the basis for high-speed trains in China, Russia and Spain. After unit-based train sets were introduced to replace power car and trailer designs, this has given rise to the Ice-T, also of 1999, which adopted tilting train technology from Italian Pendolino sets in order to help speed up slower, winding routes, supported by a diesel equivalent called the Ice-TD for non-electrified routes such as the Berlin to Copenhagen service via the Vogelflutlini train ferry, although these sets suffered many technical faults and were eventually retired in 2017. Following this was the next generation Valaro D of 2013, which improved the design of the previous Ice 3, while also forming the basis of the new Eurostar E320 sets, as well as export models for the Turkish State Railways, and finally the Ice 4 of 2015, the latest iteration of the Ice Train, but one that has suffered significant problems with the carriage frames that saw Siemens and Bombardier forced to repair the sets before entry into service was permitted by DB. Otherwise, the ICE network has expanded greatly since its original conception, with international operations now seeing sets working west along the LGVS to Paris, south to Zurich and Interlaken in Switzerland, northwest to Liège and Brussels in Belgium, as well as Amsterdam in Holland, and east to Salzburg and Vienna in Austria, with one set even being dragged through the Channel Tunnel to London in October 2010 as part of a possible introduction of direct services between Britain and Germany, but these were dropped in June 2018 due to stringent legislation regarding the types of trains that could be used inside the tunnel. Overall, despite its rocky entry into service, delivery and reliability faults with some of the later generations of train sets, and the tragedy of the Eschter derailment, the ICE train has helped revolutionise train travel across Germany, providing quality express services on both high-speed and non-high-speed routes that have helped to reduce journey times across the nation.